<laughs> Hi, I'm Fred Reed from CNY Alive. We are at Subcat Studios in downtown Syracuse, uh, and our special guests tonight are the Light Keepers. Hey. Welcome. Thank you for coming out. Um, I'd like to go through and have everybody just kind of introduce themselves in case somebody who doesn't know you will know after we're done here. So why don't we just go ahead and start with you, sir. Right. Mike Finstor, uh, guitar, acoustic and electric. Excellent. Uh, Elliot Jarvis, bass and vocals. I'm Jess Sheldon, vocals, 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 and vocals. And tambourine. Oh, a tambourine. No question. Do you guys have vocalists or? <laughs> uh, my name's PJ Will, I'm a guitar player and backup singer. Excellent. And I'm Scott Catucci, I manage the band. Man, should speak up, Scott. We gotta hear you, man. Manager! It's Ed Manager! And your drummer, who is? Jack. Is we love him, we miss him. He's in Rochester. Jack Jarvis. Jack. Jack Jarvis. He was not able to make it tonight. So let's go back a little bit, like four or some odd years, and say there was a day when the Light Keepers got together and they weren't known as that yet, and you decided to form this. So how did that all come about? Okay, so I met, I met a friend of mine uh, downtown at the Dinosaur Barbecue, uh, Charlie Orlando, and I was looking for a guitar player for some stuff that I was writing, and he said, you need to my, or, uh, meet Mike Vinstor. So anyways, Mike happened to be there. <laughs> so I talked to Mike a little bit and uh, told him what I was doing, and he said, why don't you come over to my house and we'll work on some stuff and see how things go. So I went over once, went over twice, and we started playing some stuff, and we were just like, hey, you know, we, we really should think about a band here. And I'm just like, you know, I think so. I, I like it, you know. Uh, so we kind of formulated a little bit, and we started kind of throwing some other musicians in the mix, and then we were like, well, who's going to sing? And I was like, I can tell you one guy that's not, and that's me. And I said, he said the same thing. I was like, there's no way we're going anywhere if PJ or not, or if we're the lead singers. Yeah. So he goes, do you know any good singers? And I said, well, you know, I don't know if she's good, but she's... No, I actually was like, you know, I know a girl that I've, you know, I had the opportunity to play with a few times down in Norwich, which if, I don't know if you know where Norwich is, it's in Southern Tier. Uh, but I said, I'd, I'd like to try her out, you know, and maybe it'd be cool to work with a female vocalist too, you know, instead of having such a, you know, masculine thing going on all the time, it might be nice to have a different side, you know. So we brought her up, we gave her free reigns and said, hey, try some of this, try some of that. We played a few odds and end covers and mingled with some of the stuff that Mike and I had been working on and bam you know. It's like uh, magic. Over a few dinners, we came up with a name and... Uh, here we are, you know. So uh, you had kind of a story with the, where the name came from, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The name actually, Jess, Mike, myself, and it wasn't um, Elliot and Jack at the time was some other musicians, but um, we were discussing the name of the band a little bit, and we were, you know, we were all talking about positive things. You know, we wanted it to come across as trying to keep a positive light in you know, a very dismal world sometimes, you know, and like, even if we dis or uh, we sing about or, you know, discuss kind of dark things in our music lyrics, it's usually because we want to point out that there's a hope or a light, you know. And our good friend Mike Powell, who was an electrician, who was a very eccentric fellow, and also I would say very... How would you guys describe him? Lit. <laughs> He's, he has the light. He, uh, so we got to kind of throwing around the idea. And basically, you know, Jess was under the same thing. Mike was under the same thing. We wanted to just like, you know, like kind of push forward and, you know, be light keepers. You know, and that's what we decided. And so through irony and a bunch of discussion and stuff, we ended up with that name. You know, it's just how it came to be. It's, it's more than a name though, you know, it's it's, it's a, a statement. It's a, statement. It's a yes. you know, we're stewards. It's not about keeping the light to yourselves. It's about keeping it so that you can share it. And the music, keeping the music alive, right. like the Aretha Franklins and, mm -hmm. you know, Ray Charles and Janis yeah. Joplin and Hendrix and all the greats that, you know, just pay homage to them and, you know, the respect yeah. that they carry you know, the torch they lay. Yeah, the right. torch. Yeah. Exactly. That's a light too. So no, that's right. what we're talking Double about. Double entendre. Yeah. So you guys did not start out playing covers. You just really started out as an original 
yeah. band. For the most part, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, you play covers, but yes. really your main goal here was to write your own stuff. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So how did you, other than, like you just said, paying homage to the greats, is you guys have kind of a unique sound that actually sounds like you just walked out of 1965. <laughs> and I mean that as a compliment, not that you haven't watched in or anything, but, you know, um, your sound is really, it, it's, it's very classic, but you bring your own stuff to it. And how did you, how did you guys come about getting to that, choosing this? I don't, I don't, think, think, I don't think it was really a choice. It just kind of comes out that way. It's going to be that way. That's guys... just, that, I mean, it, that's just how it comes out. A lot of people ask me, oh, how do you sing like that? And I'm like, oh, just open my mouth and it comes out that way. I don't, I can't teach you how to do it. You know, and I think it was just natural for all of us to just, you know, we each contribute. Um, and, you know, we, we all come from different backgrounds and everything. But I think that that varied background ends up just sounding really retro, which... Yeah, I think it's just all our combined influences in a mixing bowl. Mm -hmm. And it just happens to come out that way, you know. Yeah. We all share, like you know, certain loves for some of the music that we, you know, touch upon and stuff. But I think, you know, Mike has a different category that he kind of may, like, pull from than I do, or she does, yeah. or Elliot does. But it's the fact that we can take what we individually like or try to achieve and give it to each other and let them take their part. And right. that's what we end up with, you know. So kind of walk me, this is going to be awkward for you, but kind of walk me through when you guys want to sit down and develop a new song, how does that how does that look? It's, or... it's not always the same formula. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, let's start with. Do you guys start with a, a beat, or do you start with the lyrics? Like, where do you start? I think usually we start with lyrics. Although sometimes Mike will will come up with something. And like chord progression. Text or, me, hey, listen to this chord progression <laughs> I came up with. And I'll loop um, it on in like the um, and then, you know, editing team. software over and over so it's like a rave or something. Which is a great tool, by the way. Yes. Pounded into their heads. Yeah. <laughs> um, and PJ writes, uh, I just get like a three o'clock in the morning idea or something. <laughs> I get I get That's lyrics from PJ and they're like scribbled on coffee stained notebook pages. They're all or napkins. Crumbled. So wait, napkins. we have old school here, and then we have this other guy using new technology yeah, yes, to kind of yeah. put it together. Yeah, right? yeah, that's I mean. We're Frankenstein. Yeah, we, and we do. Um, I, when when Mike Powell uh, sends me lyrics, it's usually like pages and pages and pages of stuff, and I'm like. Okay, pick the best verses. <laughs> I remember oh, what's verses. Verses thirteen think it was and twenty-seven. Um, <laughs> free for like, all. He, yeah. he miracle. Said, I mean, even yeah. like back there, to miracle. There were like nine or ten verses, and I, you know, I was like, okay, this one, and then and then we'll put it here, and we figure out how to Frankenstein it, to stitch it together. <laughs> Just as good at that. And, by the way. Uh, like she has that in front of her. She's good. I feel like a lot of what I. Um, and especially with our first album, uh, a lot of what I do is interpretation. Um, I didn't write anything on our on our first album, so you know it's fun. It's fun to like take someone else's ideas, and make you know, make them my own, and then you know, run with it. So yeah. So let's talk about the the latest album. What did you call it? It's called uh, Talk. Talking Man's Blues. Talking Man's Blues. Yeah. It's, and it's actually, uh, it's a lyric from one of the songs. It is. So, it is. so um, how long have you guys worked on that one? Uh, when did you maybe start really kind of compiling what? this? 14, 15 months ago? Or Writing-wise no. or, or no. recording? Or, I mean, we started recording in, what, January? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we had to do pre-production before did, that. Yeah, right. Right, about three, four months of pre-production. I think so, I yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah. And, and a lot of the songs, not all of them, but several of the songs we've been playing live for a while. Mm. Um, and it was like, oh, can't, I can't wait to get this down. Because <laughs> uh, it's already solid. Uh, and then some of them were, you know, more of a product of the studio where, I don't know really what's going to happen, but let's go in and cut it and see what happens. So, uh, and so they, you know, and as you play them out, they... They grow and progress and take on their own life. <laughs> well, I know that I heard you guys play um, on 105 Rebels Soundcheck here, and yeah. I heard a couple of your new songs on there, and couldn't wait till the 
whole thing came out. I'm like, hey, wait till November. <laughs> you guys yeah. played it a couple months ago, and it was, you know. Yeah. We said the same thing. We were, <laughs> honestly, we, you know, we really wanted to come out with it this summer. It just, it's, it's a lot of work. And there's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that has to happen before you can yeah. really cut it. So, uh, yeah, November 2nd, we did work. I'm stoked. <laughs> so we, we talked, we were talking about, you know, how the band works and everything. You guys are really doing your music and stuff, but... Um, I do have to bring in the fact, because he is hitting here, that one of the things that you guys mentioned that really helps you is to have a, a guy in the background, or a woman, could be either, um, really being the manager to help do the other stuff so that you guys can, can really specify, stay focused on what you're right. doing. Yeah. Um, Tell us about what you do for these guys <laughs> in the background. As I said, the silent band member that nobody sees. Yeah, sure. It's a booking shows, uh, thinking up um, publicity, right? It's trying to get uh, basically be the publicist, be the booking agent, uh, graphic design, um, you know, uh, looking at trying to get this uh, the music onto Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes. Uh, so getting the mechanical license for the cover songs, um, just talking to people about uh, doing like reciprocal shows and trying to get like other bands to be like, all right, well, we'll come out to Albany and play with you and you come to Syracuse, play with us. So building relationships and really just kind of isolating them so that they can focus on the music and I can handle the business aspects of it. And you're also the guy that sends all the listings to CNY Live to make sure our calendar's up to date. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sorry, I didn't throw it in there. <laughs> you know, it, maybe even another role is just just being a positive source of, um, you, you know, love for the music. I, I love their music. So when they first came into the studio, I hadn't heard them yet. And when they started playing, I was like... I'm in there, like, in the control room, rocking up the guitar. I love this. I'm like, hold on, focus, focus. You know, I'm working here. I was doing the engineering. So I actually engineered the album, mixed the whole album. And so even that aspect of it, coming up with cover art and, you know, figuring out who gets writing credits and just... Oh, it's going to be a hard one. Well, it's it's not necessarily hard. It's just a matter of it, these things all take time. So we work out the details, and um, I don't yeah. think we could call him just a manager because he does a lot. You know, is the sixth member of the band. He's, he's yeah, a six he, light keeper. But he's he's also he's he's, he's a good <laughs> human being to be around. So sometimes, like if we're having a, somebody's having a tough time in the band, like maybe at a show or something. He kind of takes the edge off, yeah. You know, I don't know how to put it any way, other way. And he's a fan of music, which is a huge plus. Maybe, you know, above being a fan of our music, he's a music right. fan, and I think he understands like the fan base. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because they're important to us, and I, I can, I can guarantee you, any one of us will tell you that. Like it is super important to us to see the person in front of us enjoying themselves and liking what they're hearing. That is more important than money to us. Oh yes, absolutely. Far. That might be another piece of it. Is <clears throat> I'm in the rehearsal with them as they're working something out, and if I'm rocking over in the corner, yeah. like they're, oh, I guess yeah. it's working. He's like the canary yeah. in yeah, the coal man. Can't fall asleep yet. You're okay. He hasn't keeled over yet, so we're doing pretty good. If yeah. Jess hits the high pitch, you know it's not. You know, it's it's that a coma? He doesn't fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, even to content uh, content creation. So I'll, I'll video, take photos, and use them on social media sites, Facebook, creating videos for the Facebook page, uh, even just promoting shows. And yeah, it really runs the gamut. And sometimes it's like herding cats. You know? It's like, <laughs> that used to be my job. Yeah. The herding used to be my job. Like trying to get everybody in one place at one time or, or whatever nice it is. It's nice to be able to so. that over. Uh, so yeah, it's it's kind of a little bit of everything. Do you have to watch for the cat fights too, or absolutely? Or are they pretty mellow? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think there's fewer though since there's Scott's been around. I have to say, oh, like, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. No, yeah. And it, it, you know, no, we wouldn't really fight. We just always have strifes as far as like most of the time it's business related. It's exactly. and that's the stuff we're not good at. Right. Mm -hmm. That's where he comes in, and things are just so much easier, <clears throat> nicer, and like and he's objective too. Yeah. yeah exactly. You know? 
He's objective. Having somebody who's going to tell you, yes, you're great, or no, you suck this night. You know? <laughs> you're yeah. terrible. You know, we got to work on it. He's this. never told you that. No, he hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, he does, he does share criticism when it's deserved. I, I yeah. will give him that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, we've talked a lot, but there's one thing. Like if, if the, the people that are watching, if they don't, you know, if they don't know who you guys are. I hate using the word genre because I, I think it's a limiting thing that some people have to kind of hear something. What would you, what is the genre that you guys are doing? I call it soul jam. Soul jam. Okay. It's so full like your old school Aretha and Janice, but it jams like the Grateful Dead and the Allman Brothers. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's obviously a very retro feel. Uh, uh, not necessarily decidedly so, like I said, it just kind of comes out that way. Yeah, but. It's it feels right there. It's soulful and it jams. <laughs> it's, it's a new one. It's a new genre. Or, yeah. And we're not afraid to rock either. Yeah. You know? Or like, oh, no, yeah. or pull a swing thing. Or you know, like, it gets bluesy. It gets jazzy. It gets I, funky. I, I just like to say it's, it's good music. Yeah. I feel like it is. Good I mean, music. you know, I let other people interpret whether they think it is, but I think it's great. I love it. We certainly have a good time making it. So. What's what's uh. Well, the CD comes out in November 4th, and I think November you said 2nd. November 2nd, sorry. November 2nd. sorry. That's okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to get the third. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 they laid the dollar short now. It'll be sold out. Uh, you, you have it where you have it out for? Are you going to have it out for people to get it? Yeah, it'll be on uh, Spotify, Google. Apple Music, iTunes, all those uh, streaming platforms. Pandora. Pandora. Yeah. Can they get it locally, too? Yeah. Absolutely. Like CD Star release party, yep. as a matter of fact. Yeah, yeah. Right. party on November 2nd at, at Funky Waffles downtown. Go. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. What time is that? Ten o'clock, ten o'clock. I don't know. I just show up when he tells me. Get there early. Get, get there early and get your CD before you miss out. Yeah. And a what? Thanksgiving waffle too. Oh yes. Yeah, really. The yeah, jive, the jive turkey, turkey. I highly recommend. <laughs> it's delicious. Well, just as a promo too, or actually, <laughs> if you were to buy an advanced ticket for that, uh, the album release party, uh, you get a free digital download of the album. So buy your ticket ahead of time. I'm wondering right now. <laughs> <laughs> What's uh What's next for you guys? I mean, do you have any gigs coming up really pretty soon in the next month or so that you want to talk about? Yeah, you, so you tell them, Mike. You tell them. We're getting to play the one and only Bitter End in New York City on what is it, November eighteenth? It's on a Sunday, Sunday night. and we're gonna. I think we're gonna do a bus trip, <laughs> yeah. um, and okay. take people down with us. Oh, really? On the bus, yeah. Get on the bus. Yep. Get on the bus. They yeah. Do holiday shopping in New York, and then go to the show. Get some New York pizza, bagel, etc. Hot dog. Give me all the specifics for that, so we can make sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Where Dylan yeah. started, Billy Joel, except you know, excellent. it's a historic, yeah. historic place. Great place to just go. Period. Like, mm -hmm. just it, you'll be like just awe inspired walking through the door. It's it's awesome. That does sound awesome. That is very cool. Any you know, another thing I wanted to say thank you to you for yes. doing what you do. Thank you. Yes. I, I I think this is. As I said before, we started doing uh, this interview. I think what you're doing is very important to the music scene, more it, important yeah. than people realize. Mm -hmm. It's integral. Um, like, it really, it really is. is. And I, I can attest I'm, I'm super thankful for people like yourself. So yes, thank, thank you. you. And your wife. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> She's in the reflection back there. Take that, take that, take that, take that, take the village. Live music. Yeah. Get out and see, yeah. I will get say that, get out and see live music. Um, again, the name of the CD is? Talking Talk Man's Talk Blues. 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 Man Blues, November 2nd. 2nd? <laughs> and Funkin' Waffles. And look for the bus tour. And then we'll be at Funkin' Waffles and the, the, the Bluegrass Festival. Yeah. Okay. I really appreciate you guys taking the time Thank and talking to us. I appreciate uh, Subcat Studio for allowing us to start our hopefully monthly series with local bands um, in Syracuse. Again, go out to see the bands. Go out and tell them how much you like them. And find them on CMY Alive. And we'll see you next time.